What can we conclude on the point of view of interpretation? Well, Einstein has written the answer. Not that he did not believe in his reasoning, but he wanted to demonstrate by reductio ad absurdum that you have to accept his ideas. But now we know, by the violation of Bell's inequality, that we have to reject it. And so, according to Einstein, we have to admit the following thing. Either drop the need of the independence of the physical reality present in different parts of space, or accept that the measurement done on one system changes instantaneously the situation of the second system. And this is called quantum non-locality. It means that when you have a pair of entangled objects, whatever their distance, this pair of objects has to be considered as a wool. The property of the wool system is more than the reunion, that the addition of the property of one and the property of the other one. You should not conclude from non-locality that you can transmit information faster than light, and if you ask me, I will tell you why. Now, in the last minutes of this talk, I would like to tell you that something wonderful has happened. Smart people, and only a few names are here, came to the idea that entanglement is so fascinating that there should be a way to do something useful with it. And they came with the idea of quantum computing, quantum cryptography, quantum teleportation. And so entanglement is at the root of many of these schemes, and I just want rapidly to give you a flavor of the scheme of Eckert for quantum cryptography. The rule of the game is that the two partners, Alice and Bob, want to exchange secretly a message, and there is a solution for that, and there is the awful eavesdropper, okay, here. And uh, the, the solution has been given by Shannon. You need to have two identical copies of two random series of numbers, of a, a random series of numbers. And so the point is how to distribute to Alice and Bob identical series of one and zero. And the solution is entangled photon launch entangle photon towards Alice and Bob, and they take random orientation, pre-established random orientation, and once it is, and they look at the result, and when it is finished, they publicly released the series of orientations they had taken. And when they have taken the same orientation, they know for sure that the result is the same, so they only keep these events, and they have the series, the identical series, random, uh, zero and one. And you see, if you believe what I have told you, there is nothing to spy for the guy we see here. Because the result is done only at the very end, when you do the measurement. If it was not the case, it, there would have been no violation of Bell's inequality. And you can even prove that if the guy here is trying to do something, he will, so to speak, create something like hidden variable, so actually Alice and Bob can test that there is nobody on the line by testing Bell's inequality. If there is a violation of Bell's inequality on their results, and this they can check by normal radio, then they are sure that there is nobody spying. There is also quantum computing. I am not going to comment on that, except that the idea of quantum computing is massive parallelism because the Hilbert space in which you describe entanglement is huge. And with this, I would like to raise the question which is raised in the title of the talk. And the question is, are we living a new quantum era? And I think that from the conceptual point of view, there is no doubt. We are really in a new era. Entanglement is a revolutionary concept as guessed by Einstein and Bohr and demonstrated by Bell, and this is drastically different from wave particle duality, which was at the root of the first quantum revolution. And I would like to draw your attention that something fantastic has happened in the last decades. We, all physicists, have learned how to control individual quantum objects like atoms, single ions, uh, single photons, 
single ions, single electrons, single photon pairs. In the experiments on violation of Bell's inequality, you have one pair, then another pair. It's individual pairs, OK? And I think that when you have these two new features of quantum mechanics, individual quantum objects and entanglement, we really live in a new quantum world. So the next question is, will this new conceptual revolution give birth to a new technological revolution? We know that the first quantum revolution, based on wave particle duality, gave us transistor, computer, lasers, that is to say the information society. Will quantum computers and quantum communication lead to the quantum information society? Well, I think that the roadmap probably will be as usual from proof of principle with elementary microscopic objects as photon atoms, etc., to solid state device. And I understand that there are big progress being done these days in this domain. We don't know really the answer. It's a fascinating issue. We live exciting times. And since I have another few seconds, I should acknowledge two brave young students who joined me at the end of this adventure 30 years ago or 25 years ago. They joined me to complete the 1982 experiment. You know this guy, but you don't know them like that. So I am going to show a recent photograph of them. Jean Dalibar and Philippe Grangier were bright young students coming with me to complete this experiment. And I owe a lot to their participation. With this, I thank you for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.